in your obviously in your in your collegiate career, you had an, an, an incredibly successful collegiate career. You were a three-time NCAA champion. Uh, it, you did a very decorated career in college. I know that I know that in your in your senior year, uh, you've said in the past that you felt very burnt out, uh, and I'd love to talk to you about that. What, what what made you feel like you were getting burnt out, and what lessons can you recommend to someone else who may be feeling the same way to overcome a plateau uh, that you may go through in your career? Well. The reason I said I was burned out wasn't wasn't necessarily during my senior year. My senior year was the most difficult year of my life by far. Um, I had I had just won the NCAA's the year before. I was named the outstanding wrestler from the year before, and now I have to go through my senior year. And everybody's shooting for me, and I got nothing to gain and everything to lose. And they got nothing to lose and everything to gain. So there's a huge target on my back now. And that's something I really hadn't dealt with that much before. And um, it was very difficult because the coach, we, when me and Dave were in, in uh, after our, my freshman year in college, we, we both made the junior world team. And we met Jim Humphrey, who was the uh, assistant coach at Oklahoma. And so we transferred. I went to UCLA my freshman year. And then my now we both transferred to Oklahoma because we thought if we stayed at UCLA, it's a rinky-dink program. It's a low-budget program. They don't care about wrestling. There's no fans in the stands. And it's just – it. It'll be a miracle if we win the NCAAs at UCLA, which, but ironically, we had our first NCAA champion my freshman year, Fred Bona at heavyweight. But anyway, we made the junior world team after that year, and we met Jim Humphrey, and we thought, this guy's really funny. He's real fun. He's super tough. He's a world silver medalist, and he became a, a two-time national champion on top of that. And... Uh, Let's go to Oklahoma and have him coach us. And Oklahoma's a powerhouse uh, school, wrestling school. You know, they have tons of people uh, in the stands. You know, it's important. Wrestling is important. They ex they expect you to win. It won't be a miracle. They expect it. And so we transferred there. Well, my senior year, Jim Humphrey leaves. And he goes and takes a national coaching job at Canada. My brother graduated. And so he's gone. He's not going through the same thing as I'm going through. Andre Metzger, my best friend, he graduated. So he's not going through it. So I'm basically all alone. And uh, Coach Abel, who's a, Coach Stan Abel, he's a great coach, was going through a very difficult divorce. And... He just wasn't there that much. And I needed somebody to be there for me. And I just felt so alone and isolated that uh, I just bought this little black and white TV and stuck it in my room. And I'd go to class. I'd go to practice. I'd run on my own. And I'd go back to my room and just watch my TV all alone. Just because nobody was going through what I was going through. Nobody could understand what I was going through. And my at the end of the year, and then I got strep throat at the NCAAs, and I was barely winning my matches. And I I came away winning the NCAAs, but it was so difficult to go through that entire year. I hurt my back two months before. I, I mean, I'm not making an excuse. I'm just saying I hurt my back two months before the NCAAs. I didn't work out in the last two months in the wrestling room. For the NCAAs, I'd go to the swimming pool and just swim. I'd show up for competitions. And there was so much pressure on me to do good because all the good guys on the team had left. And Coach Abel needed me to get, you know, pins or superior decisions. And I just wasn't that big of a pinner. And, you know, I was more of a uh, – my defense was great, but I wasn't one of these guys that just blew people out of the water with high-scoring matches. And it was just a lot of pressure. And, man, I still, to this day, have recurring dreams that it's 
the day before the NCAAs. And for some reason, I forgot to work out the last two months. And I'm trying to figure out in my head, how am I going to get through this tournament? Maybe I should just take a knife and stab myself in the leg and just, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to do. And, it, and I wake up in a cold sweat every time I have this recurring dream. And that's how much that year impacted me. I, mean, I still have nightmares about it. But thank God I got out of it alive. You know, because I would rather win my senior year in college than than lose my team. I'd give away all my NCAA titles to have one title my last year because you want to go out a winner. And uh, thank God I, I won my senior year. That's well, I mean, that really is incredible to be dealing with all that emotionally and then also the physical stuff like the back injury and the strep throat. I mean, that really, it really is just a testament to your, to your, to your will and your character. You know, I think that's awesome. Um, if, if you don't mind, what are some things along that time that you learned that you think um, are teachable lessons or some, some, something, advice that you could give to maybe a young wrestler out there listening who feels like they're in a slump? What, uh, what words of wisdom can you offer? Well, I learned something really, I learned something about myself going through that senior year. I mean, for me to be able to withstand all that pressure and, uh, and, and handle it somehow and still come away with an NCAA title, uh, I didn't know if I could do it, but I did it. And I was so happy with myself, you know, you're, there's nothing, nothing motivates you more like your own success. And I, I, I use the same techniques that uh, I had learned in high school from Jiddu Krishnamurti about dying to the past, living in the present, observing what is, not what should be, without judgment. And uh, if anybody wants to learn what I learned, all they have to do is read his book, called you are the world i think that would help anybody that's having a hard time you know uh thinking about their past and we all have regrets and you know thinking doesn't i mean you have to think to know what your name your address your phone number but thinking is actually a it's actually a, a disability if you if you're constantly thinking about your past and regretting the past you have to die to the past and live in the moment and not think about the future and just observe what's going on in your mind. It's amazing what you realize when you think about all the shattering that goes on in your mind. And it's just, you know, all the time. And if you could just observe it, not try to change it, just step back and observe it. Uh, something something changes in you and you'll see that there's all kinds of things going on in your mind sometimes it's up so, you know it's like a ball bouncing sometimes it bounces up and down fast sometimes slow sometimes it circles around you know it and but if you can just watch what's going on in your mind and in the world without judgment uh something will happen and you'll change you'll be able to deal with the present moment 